My name is Dan Davidson, and I'll be your instructor for this class. Before we get going, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've been an instructor at Pima College since 1971. You can do the math on that. And I've taught math classes all the way from basic mathematics, Math 82, up through calculus. I've also taught a lot of interesting classes, things like holography for artists, physics of musical instruments, and even a course called How Things Work, the physics of everyday things, like how does your toaster work? And over that 30 years or so, people have told me that I've developed an ability to make complicated technical things understandable. And I hope I can take what I've learned and apply it to teaching maths and making this course interesting and hopefully even enjoyable for you. Now, studying math is a little bit different because each class builds on the previous one. It's like a pyramid, so that if you, if you have a good foundation, then the next level of math and the next and the next will be clear to you. If you have a bad foundation, it's going to get more and more and more rickety. Um, if you understand the basic concepts behind things, it will eliminate the amount of memorization you have to do. And math is learned not by looking at it or reading, but it's learned by doing problems. And in fact, for those of you who play musical instruments, in a way, math is very, very similar to playing music. Ooh. The more you practice, the better you get. And of course, I could probably use some fiddle practice here. Now, let's talk a little bit about math problems per se. First of all, there are the basic kind of problems that just test your memory and skills. And you'll need to acquire some skills, like fast access to the multiplication table that the gentleman working on his math is doing here. What's 7 times 8? Well, when this class is over, you'll know that pretty well. Then there are problems that apply to situations familiar to you. For example, again, with ratio or proportion, how do things scale up or down if you're cooking? Problems applying to things unfamiliar. For example, rocket science. And we're going to actually be looking in some problems in the weeks that come are what happens when things fall or move. Now. Problems can be complex. You can't just look at a math problem and write the answer down. Sometimes you need to go through two, three, four, or even five steps until you reach the final answer. So you need to learn to be patient. Um, you need to write out your solutions very, very nicely as, instead of just scribbling them so that you can go back and see what you've done. And for all problems, you need to learn how to check your answer. One check is, is my answer reasonable? Does it make sense? For example, suppose I'm dealing with distances from here to, say, Nogales, and I get 900 miles. Right away, I'll understand that there may be something wrong with how I did that problem. Now, let's talk quickly about improving your math attitude. Again. You can do this. Um, study math with your preferred learning style. If you learn things by writing them out, then write a lot of stuff out. If you learn things by moving things around or thinking very concretely, do that. Figure out how you learn best and stick to that. If you don't understand something, get help right away. Don't rely on memorization. Try to understand what goes on underneath everything that you're doing. Find a relaxed and comfortable place to work while you're studying. Not too comfortable, of course. We wouldn't want you to fall asleep, but comfortable so that you're, you can put your mind on the math and not worry about something poking you or something making too much noise. <laughs> 